Well, welcome to the next video in my bowl making series. Thanks for clicking on this. Uh, what you see in front of me, in front of my camera there, is uh, all the material I need for this next bowl. I'm jumping forward again because I'm waiting on some material to come in on, on the, another bowl I want to make. That seems to be where I'm getting up against it now is having the right materials. And I'm scrounging for this one too. This is going to be this crisscross bowl. She used teak and maple. Well, I'm using maple and walnut. The main body of the bowl is going to be the maple. And then the walnut is going to be crisscross. So what i got to do is cut these diagonally, from diagonally and glue one of them in, let that sit. Then I'll cut it the other way and glue the other one in. And then it's just a matter of applying the pattern and cutting it. It's a very simple uh, pattern. You, they have a pattern for the first ring and it's kind of squarish. Then you use that to uh, mark your next rings and, and use that, use the first ring as your pattern. And this is going to be a fairly difficult because this is a very hard maple. Uh, I cut this on table saw to get, get the blank made and yeah it wasn't easy to cut so it's going to be I'm going to have to use the biggest blade I can use and cut very very slowly so it doesn't flex and then sanding it's going to be a, a long process I'm afraid but I think it'll make a really nice bowl so let me start cutting and gluing this together and we'll set the saw up with probably a number nine and apply the pattern and cut it very carefully okay so I put that on my uh, crosscut slid the, the ripping blade and I uh, managed to center it because this fit real nicely in the little slot on my crosscut and then I lined that up with it with the blade and slowly came down on it and cut it straight I uh, didn't cut it like I say with, I cut it with a table saw I cut the last blank with my scroll saw, I didn't like the results I got. And I got these three pieces of tape from one. I don't want to glue it to my table here in the center. And I got these out here just to make sure this stays level with that tape in the center so I don't get any, get off any. It hasn't bothered me before. I, I haven't always put this tape down, but I'm going to go ahead and put it down, make sure I keep it lined up. So now I'm going to glue this in there. And when that sits, I'll cut it across the other way and do the other one. Well, I've got a little bit of discrepancy here between her directions and her photo in the book. She said to, when you get this first one in corner to corner, draw a line down the center of it, put the blank on there and line that up, and then mark your lines out here, and then draw that line, and that's where you cut and glue the next piece in. But as you can see, that doesn't come out right on the corner. And her one picture shows that. Okay, she's got it laying as you can see in that picture it doesn't come out on the corner then you flip the page and she's got the blank showing corner to corner so I'm not sure what's going on there but I'm going to go with this because this has to line up that, that walnut has to line up with these lines on that uh, pattern it doesn't matter how you put the pattern on there, you still come out off the corner because those, those aren't the same angle as the board. So anyway, when you mount the pattern, it's going to line up, and that's what counts, and that's the way I'm going to go with it. So I'm going to cut this line right here and glue this other piece in.
So on further reading, there was one little small sentence in one of her captions uh, that explained the difference in those photos. She said you can trim it off, it's optional to trim it off because you're going to have a, some excess after you put these two pieces in. So I've marked mine, I'm going to do that. Makes, she said it makes it easier to handle. So I'm going to more or less square it off. It's not perfectly square, but it's real close. But the pattern fits on it in relation to the walnut is what counts. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to trim that off on the table saw and get it down to just that piece. So I trimmed it. I didn't get it perfectly square, but the pattern fits on it in relation to the walnut and that's what matters. So the blank is pretty well put together. I'm going to sand it. The, the uh, walnut's just very slightly proud right there. I'm going to sand both sides of that and get it all smoothed down where it's level on both sides. It's not off by much, but I want to get it. That'll save me some trouble sanding on those rings when I cut them. Let me get that done, then I'll we'll mount the pattern and we'll see about making the first cuts. So I've got it sanded. I got it flush on both sides, sanded down to 100 grit. And she said to mark your guidelines according to these crossing areas. And I got those lined up pretty good, it looks like. So what I've done is I've carried that across on each side because I plan on putting tape on it. And then I'll use those to redraw the line to mount the pattern. It has the registration lines on it so you can line it up. That way this this will cross right in the center of the bowl, hopefully. Okay, I've got the pattern mounted. Got the guidelines. I drew them through so I can line them up. Everything's registering up together. So I've got to go put a new blade on the saw. And we'll go with a 9, I believe, or at least a 7. And I'm gonna, I've got to cut this at 30 degrees. You can cut two rings. Uh, 30 degrees of the last cut that's going to be I think at 28. I have to double check that. I always have to check on every point. But cut the first two rings out. First three cuts are at 30 degrees. And then I'll double check before we do that the next one. Because that's where I messed up a couple of bowls ago. I cut the wrong angle on the second cut. So I don't want to do that this time. But I know this first cut's at 30 degrees and that's what I'm going with. Alright, got my new blade in. So number nine. Got the table set at 30 degrees. So this is going to be a slow cut because it's pretty hard wood. Then I'm going to go real easy on it. Don't want to burn the wood or make it flex. So anyway, here we go. I drilled a 30 degree entry hole. Gonna cut this first ring off at 30 degrees. And get this cut. We'll see if this angle is good for material. I had one time where I had to adjust it, but that's uh, I just had to follow the directions. And then if it's off, I can adjust it one way or the other, a degree or two to make them line up better. But I'm pretty sure this is gonna be okay. All of them have worked so far, except that one. And I've made a bunch of cuts, so. Anyway, we'll cut this ring off and we'll use it to draw the line for the second ring. So the uh, cut was a little bit off, a little more than it should be. <clears throat> the uh, ring set inside the outside of the base, which means I needed to lessen it. A degree or two. So I lessened it a degree, but then at the same time we're changing angles here, and this is supposed to be at 28 degrees, so I'm cutting it at 27 and see how it lines out there. So this will be another test to see if it works. I may have to adjust it again, but then I think the third angle is also cut at a different angle. So it may not matter because it's going to be the base, I believe, and this they're trying to get a little taper on the bottom of it. I got one more ring to cut. I'm going to do it at the same angle. 
That angle worked really nicely on the last ring. It lines up very well. We're going to cut this ring off. <clears throat> then we're going to take the base and cut another angle on it, just around the outside of it. We're going to taper the base and do a little sanding on the top of it, make it look like a little pedestal type thing when we get ready to finish this up. But this is the next step. We've got to cut this ring off, make sure it lines up, and then we'll cut the base and we'll start gluing and sanding. Okay, I've reset the table to 35 degrees. I'm going to cut around the outside of that. Try not to cut into that at all <clears throat> and give that a little more taper. One thing I do like about doing that is I get to remove most of that drill mark. But then I have to be careful and not cut into this. But we're going to sand this. As I remember this procedure, I'm going to round this over to give a little bit of a, a groove between the base and the, and the ring just above it. Kind of make it look like a separate pedestal with a little bit of a taper on it. At least that's the plan. We'll see if I can make it work. Okay, the bowl is all cut out. Got all the rings and the base cut the way we want it. See that gives it a little taper down there. As you can see, these two rings don't match as well because the angle was off for this particular setup. But what I'm going to do, uh, the plan now, our next step is to glue these three rings together. So I've got to remove the patterns and clean them up. But I'm thinking I'm just going to glue these two together and sand that outside to get those to match before I do the rest of it. And then I'll glue them together and sand the inside. Glue all three of them together then and glue the in and sand the inside. Inside is not going to be hard. It's lining up really nice. Get some, uh, get some drill marks out of it and do a little clean up on that. It's going to look really nice outside. But I got to get these two. I think I want to sand those a little bit before I put the other one on. And uh, basically, I got to sand the top of that ring. I don't want to mess the bottom up because it's already lined up. So that's what I'm going to do, I believe. Now, I may mess up, but if I do, I do. I'll just fix it somehow. But here we go. I'm going to glue those together and do some sanding. Okay, I got those rings mashed up. It's really nice. It's not a final sanding, but I got them really nicely matched. So I'm going to glue the last ring on that, and then we can sand the inside of it. Okay, so I've done a bunch of sanding. I got these rings first matched up. I glued the top ring on and came back. Well, actually, these are the two I matched up and then matched the other two inside and out. On this one, you do inside and out before you glue the base on. I also rounded this off right here all the way around and the same thing on the bottom. Now I'm gonna take the base and around the top edge of that so that when you put it together those two rounded edges are together and it'll give it a little pedestal type look anyway I'm going to take this and round those off to kind of match the bottom of this and then we'll glue it together and then with the finish we'll be done so let me get started sanding 
<clears throat> it took a while to sand this main part of the bowl. I'm not sure it's exactly what she had in mind, but uh, I'm going to call it good. And time you round this one, it'll really make a little uh, a noticeable indent all the way around. So, uh, it's put together pretty good. I got one soft a little bit right there. Everybody and thing else matched up pretty well. So, uh, let me get sanding on this, and I'll see if I can match it up too. Well, I've rounded the edge on that. Maybe not enough, but I've got the effect that she has in her photo. So now I'm going to glue these together. Now I got the base glued on. That's kind of what that looks like. I have raised the grain on it with a little water, <clears throat> let it dry, and I've sanded it. Now I'm going to put a coat of wipe on poly on it, at least one inside and out. And that should bring this walnut out really nice. And we'll see what it looks like then. Okay, so there's one good coat of poly on it. Um, very well pleased with it. Usually when you put the first coat on, you find the little little places you need to sand and touch up. And I do have a few small places like that where a little glue squeeze out didn't get quite cleaned up. But other than that, I'm pleased with this bowl. Uh, and the walnut always looks nice when you finish it off. It's not really finished. I've got that coat on it that brings out the grain. You can see the grain even in the maple. And... Uh, but it doesn't have that deep and shiny look that I like to, you know, thick finish look that I like on these. Uh, slick finish. That takes about a week to get that. And I put several very thin coats on uh, one, once or twice a day, sanding in between. But that's the first coat, and I'll be sanding that and continuing on it. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, this is where I'm going to end it. I may uh, revisit it and show it later. I got two or three still in the works that I'm putting finish on right now. <clears throat> so that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching if you stuck with me this far. And uh, yeah, hit the like button if you like it. And if you're not subscribed and want to see more bowls, I got a few more in the pipeline. I don't know how many more, but uh, I'm really enjoying this and I'm learning a lot about it. So, uh, Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.